So first I want to uh, tell you that, you know, uh, about um, uh, the place where I work and my benefactor, my employer, uh, I work for Texas A&M University and it is a, a great institution. I joined in 1985 as a young assistant professor. I had a lot of uh, black jet there, like uh, you have had. And then um, I uh, progressed through the rank and in the 96 I became full professor. And then, um, you know, one thing led to the other. So I ended up in administration, but I still teach and I still supervise graduate students and so forth. So the university was founded in 1876 <coughs> and it's a land grant institution in Texas. So have you heard of land grant institution, what it means? Okay. So after the civil war in the United States in 1863, uh, Abraham Lincoln was the president. 
until then only rich kids could go to college like harvard and duke and uh, you know yale and so forth so uh, the common uh, person could not uh, afford to go to college so the uh, their passport is called the moril act moril is a senator and their passport is called the moril act in 1863 and this is the and they established the land grant institution in every state of united states uh so every state has got one land grant institution and um, texas is uh, texas and m university is a land grant institution the idea the ethos behind the uh, <clears throat> land grant institution philosophy is we are not elitist we want to uh, educate as many students as possible as many qualified students as possible impart highest quality education at affordable cost and this is how the land grant institutions were established and it so happened to me uh, by faith that i all my uh, institutional uh, association in united states has been with land grant institution kansas state university is a land grant institution purdue is a land grant institution and so is texas a&m and typically these land grant institutions uh, they have a strong engineering program and a strong agricultural program and they also have uh, a strong outreach meaning that whatever the knowledge that is created whether it is agriculture or engineering they want to reach out to the populace of the state and so that the uh, you know the populous a population of state at large is benefited and ours is a uh, comprehensive university it has got uh, 17 uh, colleges or schools so 200 majors and close to 70 individual departments and we have everything starting from liberal arts to science engineering business veterinary medicine and um, engineering medicine or complete engineering medicine for a second uh, nursing public health and law and so forth the engineering medicine is that you know uh, i know that here in india we kind of branch out to medicine and engineering uh, very early and then we don't cross so the engineering medicine uh, was uh, conceived uh, by my then boss uh, dr in katherine bag and now she is the president of the 26th president of the texas and m university and you have engineer and you have a physician and what the engineering medicine does is it is a physician here so it is a physician plus engineer so it is a physician here and to get into that program you have to satisfy all the requirements for medicine uh, there are some prerequisite courses and you have to take a exam like gre card mcat and you have to submit your mcat scores but to get into this engineering medicine program you have to have bs in either one of the engineering fields or in computer science and the idea is that it is a four year md program and after that they have to do residency but in the four year md program between the semesters you have to satisfy 30 credit hours of engineering it is a very uh, rigorous program so they get a master of engineering along with their md and as part of their master of engineering uh, they have to engage themselves in an entrepreneurial uh, project Uh, like you know could be developing a new medical device or developing a new prostate for meals or something and a new drug delivery system so they all have some kind of a uh, innovation bent to it and entrepreneurial bent to it and we have our is one of the first ones and the other the only other school that comes close to is university of illinois has another engineering medicine program we have over 70000 students and over 4000 uh, faculty members and you know um, one of the things is that uh, we have uh, two nobel laureates but uh, uh, we have there are three national academies in uh, at, uh, in united states uh, you know there, there is the national academy of sciences national academy of engineering and national academy of medicine and every year each they induct about uh, 90 to 100 people it is a worldwide uh, you know there are foreign associates many indians get elected Uh, from india and they advise the president of the united states on the science and technology of what the future is it's a very prestigious group and we have a, a you know 55 memberships in that uh, particular group and we have a strong uh, uh, core of cadet program uh, best way to describe core of cadet program is like a, something like a ncc but uh, much stronger than ncc and we uh, provide Uh, you know there are uh, army academies like you know there is army academy in um, uh, west point new york and air force academy in uh, uh, colorado springs and naval academy in annapolis maryland outside of these academies we provide the highest number of our officers for the services from texas a&m so it is a uh, very strong military school 
and uh, you know we uh, support military and we support uh, veterans. That's the former military. People. So that's <coughs> our culture and that is our ethos. Uh, next, please. So uh, you know, coming to education. Uh, you know, uh, the, the best education definition is given by Swamiji. Uh, it says that, you know, education is a manifestation of perfection that is already present in a man. And um, uh, it is an unfoldment process, right? The education, the root word for education is uh, Latin, is, uh, uh, you know, educara, that means the unfoldment. And we need to note the difference between education and training. You know, training is something you te teach to do a particular task, right? And education is much broader than that. And it is a lifelong learning experience. And that's where they can want to talk about the doctoral uh, uh, program. Next slide, please. So uh, you may ask uh, why uh, PhD. First of all, I uh, tell you that everybody don't have to have a PhD. Right? And I'm trying to convince you that it's a good investment. Right, if you want to talk, if, uh, think in terms of investment, and a lot of people have done great. You could ask Rajan, you know, they've all done great things, uh, you know, without PhD, right? But so, uh, why PhD is that it makes uh, one a lifelong learner, okay? And don't be under the impression that just because you work for three years on a particular problem for your PhD thesis, the rest of the life you are going to be confined to do that, okay? That's not the case. Right, and everything that I do now, some basics are what I learned in my PhD days, but everything is different. In fact, the first course that I taught uh, at Texas a and that I developed at the graduate level was completely different than what I had learned uh, in my Purdue days. So it makes you a lifelong learner, and it gives you an opportunity to, you know, for in-depth study, and then it positions you well uh, for R&D jobs, right, for research and development jobs. And it gives you an opportunity to solve challenging problems. You know, uh, if you have, if you are, if there is a problem that your company wants to solve, and if there is an option, you know, uh, between a PhD and another PhD, probably uh, depending on the nature of the problem, the problem may end up with a PhD, you know, degree board. So you have that opportunity, and then the opportunity to teach. Right again, uh, PhD doesn't mean that you have to be a teacher. Okay, the teaching is one of the options. And I feel very privileged that uh, I'm able to, I'm in this profession. And the teaching is a uh, calling, uh, you know, uh, I'll, I'll tell you part of the uh, message I got from my professor, uh, Jody Hoffman at Purdue. Uh, he said, uh, teaching is a calling because if I have money and I give it to you, you have it and I don't have it. And if I give you cheese, uh, you know, you have it and uh, I don't have it. But with knowledge, I give it to you, you have it, and I still have it. So the, you know, the teaching is kind of violates the, uh, what you call, um, conservation principle, if you will. Uh, so teaching is a very uh, noble profession, and, uh, you know, you get to influence, uh, you know, even today when uh, my classmates, we met, we were talking about our teachers, you know, so uh, they leave a lifelong uh, uh, impression on your uh, psyche. And um, so, and then the financial compensation, okay? Now, <clears throat> true, you know, if you start after your uh, BS, uh, if you, uh, you know, a person who starts in BS, you know, after, of course, the person gets a higher salary, but the person who starts to go to graduate school will not have a higher salary. But what you have to do is you have to look at the area under the curve, right? Uh, so you have to look at the area under the curve. And when you look at the area under the curve, I think, um, you know, in your lifespan, uh, in your career, uh, you will come out ahead uh, financially. And um, next slide, please. So, you know, the, uh, I want to emphasize on the lifelong learning. Uh, careers will last uh, 40 to 50 years. They're, you know, they're best on the health uh, care that we have today compared to what my parents had. Uh, we'll all be working at least 40, 45 years. Right. Uh, so, and in this time, the technology will change, gosh, seven, eight times, you know. And um, each time the, uh, the paradigm shifts, uh, we need to be, you know, um, ready to adapt. Like, um, I don't think any of you have seen valve radios. Have you anybody seen a valve radio? Old radio. Murphy. <laughs> so, yes, Murphy. <laughs> so, when we were we used to listen to cricket commentary on the valve radio, right? So then the valve radio was replaced by three electric transistors. And in BMS College, that's the electronic laboratory we did with the uh, amplifier and everything, the three electric transistors. And then came the IC chips, 
right? And then came uh, the uh, Moore's law, the saturated the Moore's law. Uh, and now uh, the only way to pack more circuits into a little bit of IC chip is through architecture. And so, you know, uh, I don't think you have to go to a museum to find the valve radio. Now. So the technology has changed, right? And then look at the Swiss watch companies, which used to make Swiss, uh, they were the famous for the uh, watchmaking. And when the Texas Instrument came up with the digital watch, as there was a paradigm shift and the Swiss watchmakers lost their business, right? So it is very important that, you know, we learn uh, nonstop, okay? Credit to Greg, we need to be learning, okay? Uh, we need to be learning, we need to be reading uh, because otherwise we will uh, fall behind and uh, we will have a, um, we'll inherit the earth uh, that's not relevant anymore, right? Uh, so it is very important that, you know, uh, we are relevant, whatever we do, uh, should be relevant. And um, you have heard of uh, ROI, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, return on investment. Uh, but actually, ROI, ROI in, uh, from Texas a and University point of view is it is relevance, opportunity, and inclusivity, not investment. You know? So ROI is relevance, opportunity, and inclusivity. So next slide. Okay, so uh, career opportunities for PhD, as I said, it is not just uh, teaching, okay? Uh, you can go to industry, you can go to national laboratories, like uh, in India, you can go to NAL, you can go to national chemical laboratories, national physical laboratories, LRD, and so forth, and that's the defense establishment, national aeronautical laboratories, and you can join policy making bodies and think tanks, uh, you know, to develop policy papers to the government and so forth. And then, of course, the academia is there uh, to teach, right? Uh, so, you know, this is a, uh, these are the various options you have um, after your uh, doctoral degrees. Next slide, please. So, uh, how do you choose a PhD, uh, you know, program? You know? So, all of you will have many options. Of course, we all go by, you know, uh, reputation of the institution, right? Uh, so, uh, I would say that try to go to the best place that you can get in, right? But more than that, also you need to do your research on your advisor, right? And uh, you know you need to make sure that you pick the right advisor, all right? Uh, the advisor meaning your thesis, I think we call it your guide, I think, you know, your thesis guide. Uh, because, uh, you know, um, uh, thesis guide, you know, should have a real uh, interest in seeing their students succeed, right? Not most of them are, they have that, but some of them may not have it, right? So you need to talk to your senior students and then find out uh, who is what and, you know, make sure that you pick the uh, right advisor. And you should not be taking, after master's, you should not take more than four to five years to finish your PhD, okay? And that should be enough. And the PhD typically in US consists of the following, and I'm sure that India is the same thing. Uh, we have coursework, okay, which is very important. Uh, you know, uh, the uh, typical after masters, typically they take about eight courses, right? And then after uh, eight courses, and before they do the coursework, we have what is called the PhD qualifying exam, okay? And the PhD qualifying exam is usually held at the uh, entry graduate level and senior undergraduate level. Uh, the reason is that um, uh, we want to make sure uh, that our students don't embarrass when they graduate. So we want to make sure that solid in fundamentals. So what this does is that, for example, if you are in mechanical arts, like I am in mechanical engineering, we want to make sure that, you know, the person must become the basic principles and uh, basic um, uh, dynamics principle, basic, the basic thermal science principles and so forth. And similarly, if you are in electrical sciences, there are other things that uh, you can look for. So after the qualifying exam, uh, coursework qualifying exam, you take what is called prelim exam. Preliminary exam is more like, um, you know, uh, proposal defense, okay? You formulate your thesis topic, and then you present it to your uh, thesis committee, right? And um, uh, the main hurdle is really qualifying exam, okay? And then the preliminary exam is like your thesis proposal defense, and then you have a final thesis defense. And what many advisors do, like I do is, 
I will not take my student uh, to uh, even prelim exam unless that student has got one peer review publication. The reason is that when you have a peer review publication, that means the your scientific community has reviewed the work and accepted the work as a quality legitimate work, right? Uh, so that gives us confidence. And if the student fails the uh, either the prelim exam or the thesis defense, it's not the student who fail; it's I who fail. Okay, because I didn't do a good job, so I took him, uh, took her to the uh, examination place uh, when the student was not prepared. Uh, so it is on me. So I need to make sure that the student is prepared and will, you know, pass. So, and then the peer review publications and patents, you know, these are the intellectual property that the students take. And these publications are important for the students' uh, career growth. And you know, uh, my as soon as I return on June third, uh, my twenty second PhD student will be defending. Bung uh, Hoi Chai is his name, and he has uh, three papers already published in peer reviewed journals. So I feel confident that you know he can go to the uh, exam and then he can. Next slide, please. And now comes the little bit of um, advice: uh, be a leader. Okay, I see a lot of young uh, faces here. Uh, you know, I can tell you that uh, you're in the right holy place here and you are going to get a very good uh, grounding in life, uh, not only technical knowledge, but the life uh, lessons. And you are going to make great things. You are going to make great things. You are going to make proud of your families. You are going to make proud of the nation. You are going to make proud of uh, the institution and the uh, Sri Ramakrishna mission. So be a leader and you know, and it doesn't mean that you have a title, okay? A leader just means that you have a follower, okay? And leader can be anything, you know? So, and then uh, be a servant leader, okay? There are many different types of leaderships, okay? Um, uh, you have a corporate leader, you have a monastic leader, you have a military leader and be a servant leader, okay? You're here to serve. And then once you take this to, you know, uh, the servant leadership embrace this philosophy. Don't worry about credit, credit will come to you. Okay. And, you know, I have experienced it personally. Okay. The, somebody in the meeting will say that, oh, NK did this. And I had to tell them that, no, NK did not do it. I did not do it. Someone else did it. And I had to give the credit. But they assume that I did it, but I didn't do it. Okay. So credit will come to you. Don't worry. Don't worry about the credit. Okay. So be a servant leader. And, you know, it's not about me. Okay, never make things about yourself. Okay, it's not about me. And not for myself. You know, when, when you do puja, we say, right, idam namama. You know, that's what it means. You know, it's not about me. So, and integrity and character matters, right? And we have a saying, uh, uh, Indian saying, probably you heard from your parents, that uh, if wealth is lost, nothing is lost. If wealth is lost, something is lost. If character is lost, everything is lost. You heard that probably from, uh, you know, so uh, integrity and character matters. Uh, so be a leader. Next slide, please. Okay. And then you need to be committed uh, to, uh, you know, DEI, but I added D squared I, I added one extra I E. Uh, so, you know, diversity is very important. Okay. You are going to be functioning people who do not look like you, people who don't have same food habits like you, people who probably have different faith, uh, but you have to recognize meritocracy and merit in as they come to you and as they inter interact with you and accommodate them and work with them. So diversity is very important, both in people and in thought and in cultures. And always the diverse thoughts and the diverse uh, you know, viewpoints brings the best solution. Because most of the problems that we are solving today uh, the uh, reparator skill set doesn't trust in one individual. It takes a team to solve a problem. And if you are, have to have a team to solve a problem, you have to have diverse you know, people in terms of culture, religion, language, and their thinking, and you have to work in a diverse workplace. Equity. Fairness is very important. And, you know, the fairness is the, uh, uh, you know, foundation for a just, sustainable society. Uh, so we need to make sure that whenever we do anything, make any decision, uh, we are equitable, okay? Uh, not equal, but equitable, right? Because you reward people according to that, what they have done. Not everybody gets equal, it is equitable, right? 
So, and then excellence, pursue excellence, the relentless pursuance of excellence, right? You know, my grandmother who was third grade education, she used to tell me, you know, that uh, if you are a toilet cleaner, be the best toilet cleaner you can be, because if there's one job, you'll get it, right? So, <clears throat> and then the inclusivity, be inclusive, okay? Never, never exclude anybody, okay? Uh, exclusion causes division, division causes suspicion, suspicion causes all kinds of other problems in the society. So be inclusive, be a team sport, and then the high tide comes, all the boats rise, right? So, you know, I think maybe it's the last slide. Okay, so in the advices, work hard, show up on time, right? That's very important, tell truth, and make a positive difference in this world, and give back to the system that made you. And now this brings back to the first slide that I showed you, that the JJ came uh, class of uh, 51 and uh, Walker class of 66, okay? Uh, Mr. Kane, uh, he was a bachelor. He never uh, got married. And he was an engineer. I mean, he, he was not a, a CEO of a company or anything. He worked for ExxonMobil. And he saved all his uh, life savings and his company stocks. And uh, before his death, he donated $10 million to our uh, uh, department. Right, so they created several professorships in his name. And uh, Walker, uh, he uh, uh, he developed a uh, built a company uh, called Dripquill. Uh, it's a deep uh, oil drilling company, uh, you know. And uh, the company was sold for hundreds of millions of dollars. And he donated money and he named the department. Okay, uh, you know. So we need to give back. So tomorrow. When you all, uh, you know, become uh, rich and famous, uh, maybe presidents and CEOs and uh, whatever, uh, you know, remember, uh, you know, who, you know, because you don't get to a place by yourself. You take a lot of people's help, right? You take a lot of people's help and help from each other. And I'm here today because of the help that I got from Rajan and from Guru Prakash and all my classmates and their support. So remember, that you know, people who help you, you know, you give back to the system. Uh, so when you are successful, please uh, give back, support each other, and focus on the journey, not on the destination. You know, uh, you know, as they say that don't make appointment with future because you'll be disappointed. The disappointment is making appointment with the future. So you just enjoy the journey, you know, and pursue excellence, and things will happen. Okay, and keep an open mind. You know, you, you know, you never know what kind of problem you, you know, you, you are going to get. So, uh, be, keep an open mind and uh, things will happen. And, um, you know, uh, for me, administration was not uh, my cup of tea. Uh, my classmates can tell you that I didn't even dress properly. I didn't even know how to wear a tie. Now I have 100 ties in my class. Okay. Things happen and then the opportunities open and then, you know, uh, here I am. So keep an open mind. You don't know what tomorrow holds for you, okay? Uh, and then uh, uh, work hard, okay? As Swami said, it's better to wear out than the rest out, right? Uh, so with this, I'll, uh, you know, conclude my presentation, but I will open up for a question and answer. This is just to simulate for you to ask me questions. Okay, when you ask question, tell your name and tell me what you are studying. Maybe you can tell because most of them are PC students. Yeah. So what what uh, aptitude they had to develop? you know, in order to pursue uh, PhD. The reason being, in Indian contest, like, you know, a person who gets a job immediately after the graduation, he feels that, you know, he, he can earn and all that. And some people have a feeling that, you know, PhD means they need to, they will be getting a very less money and the grants and things like that. Anything on that front, how to remove that particular barrier that you know, they will be earning less during the 
course. Yeah, you know, a uh, good question. You know, that's why I said, you know, you have to believe in uh, delayed gratification, okay? Uh, I didn't have time to uh, get that graph, but you can Google it. There are graphs which shows the area under the curve, okay? What will happen if you start after VS? What will happen after you start MS? And what will happen after you start PhD and then work for 35, 40 years, okay? So if you look at the area under the curve, you know, the financial rewards are there. But the, in terms of getting to aptitude, go in depth, you know, ask difficult questions, challenge yourself, challenge your teachers, right? And, uh, uh, you know, ask why until you are convinced you don't take the next step. How Indians are pursuing PhD in America? Yes. Yeah, you know, that's a little bit disappointing. And that's the reason why I want to, you know, uh, like in my previous job, um, uh, I was in engineering. And I, because of my position, uh, every faculty candidate had to go through my office. I had to interview them. Uh, if there were junior people, I used to meet them for 15 minutes. If for a senior level, I used to meet them for 30 minutes. For every uh, five or six, Chinese candidates went through my office, I would see one Indian, okay? Which is not good, right? Uh, if we as a country have to be, you know, on the forefront, uh, we need to have more PhD students. You know, we need to have a stronger graduate program. Yeah, Sarah, please. Even now you can look at, go to our websites and then see how many Indians are there in computer science versus how many are there from China? You know, you will see the difference. So it's important. But, but now I think it is changing. It is changing. Maybe go here, but I think Indians have too much. Uh, it is still, uh, it is still, uh, you not know. Not satisfied. Right. It is below satisfied. Yeah. Hmm? Below satisfied. At one time, maybe my information was dated. At one time, I looked up, uh, there were less than 100 computer science PhDs graduating within the country here. All, uh, you know, uh, country as Indian nation, as Indian nation, complete India. So, so we need people going into advanced degrees. In a way, I think the industry is also partially responsible for this failure in the past. You know? What we were discussing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Call. Unless the industry gives some impetus and you know, advantage for doing, yeah, the yeah, air, yeah. you know, if they treat, let us say, a master's degree or be on par with a graduate for taking them inside, yeah. where will be the encouragement for people to go for higher education? So, in a way, the industry is also equally responsible, which perhaps is very different in the US. The industry recognizes this. Use encouragement for this. India, very few companies, I think even today, very few companies recognize this. Yes, it's so much easier. Sure. Some of our knowledge, uh, all these facts are all. To listen in the classroom, it is acceptable and easy. Yeah. But when it comes to the real life situation, uh, their needs are different. And uh, their calculations are not matching with the presentation what you have shown. Now, uh, we are in crossroads. Our responsibility as leaders and uh, teachers and professors, especially teachers, is how to uh, connect them and uh, see that they do this graduation, uh, doctoral uh, or doctorate program. Yeah. That is where the problem lies now. Uh, I know uh, you need to understand your country where you are serving, your university where you are serving, and also Indian context also you should understand. If not, uh, a 
at least virtually, yeah. and by collecting some data. So I present uh, one or two examples with my own uh, students uh, from the same group or the past group they are. See, as soon as they complete graduation, any BSc or BE, mm -hmm. they get the salary. They have taken loan for doing BE. Uh, they are supposed to be. Parents, they lack of for foresightedness. They are eagerly waiting when it's a salary. And it is like a cycle, like a clock. Once it starts giving the X, parents are satisfied and uh, they say, oh, if you are done, good, etc. And actually, both are ignorant that uh, we are digging our own grave. Because as soon as the comfort starts, the growth stops. Yes, material affluence, facilities are, are perceived and appreciated. But uh, in the long term, uh, the growth they cannot see and they are settled with some petty uh, satisfactions. So, <coughs> what we see in India. So, give me a, a practical uh, an example. You even you can go to the statistics. Say he has made a loan of uh, four lakhs. It is assumed. By the end of engineering, he has a four lakh rupees of loan. Now, he has to work and complete the policy says the bank or the university or the college where they have studied, as soon as the graduation completes, their countdown starts. Within one and a half years of time, or maybe one year of time, they should have paid at least 10 or 15 percent. These are the compulsions yeah. these boys undergo. Yeah. And apart from this, the lack of infrastructure like house, or sister, younger, cater, marriage, and some social obligations are here. So, Professor Kaili teach our student how to maneuver the situation. And they, they carry on the uh, studies. They have to balance the earning. Some amount of earning is required. We hear from Guru Anand mm -hmm. and some of other uh, alumni that there are certain universities which provide scholarship, which uh, supports the education in some form or the other. So kindly uh, enlighten us on, on those additions. Yeah. So Swamiji, uh, you know, <coughs> this is not unique to Indian situation. This is the same problem in the United States too. Like to give you an idea, 65% uh, uh, of our engineering graduate students are international for the same reason. Only 35% are domestic. And when you go to PhD program, it is even worse. 70% are international and 30% are domestic. And we have the same problem there because students take loan and the student debt in the United States the total debt owed by all the students is greater than the all the credit card debt at any given time. Mm -hmm. And it has come to a point where the uh, universities for profit, you wouldn't have heard those names. Uh, they are uh, scheming, you know, scamming people uh, with student loans to come to the university with all kinds of promises. So this is a universal problem. So now coming back to this loan payment and this, um, you know, how to proceed from there. For masters, you know, you may get a scholarship, which means you'll get a discount in tuition. But very rarely you get assistantship for masters. And uh, for PhD, uh, if a person is accepted for a PhD program, they will get a, a salary. They will get, you know, it may not be much, but like at, at AM, the minimum monthly rate is $2,200. And plus, that person gets paid tuition and fee. So the out of pocket expense is very limited. And it costs a project about, you know, to support one PhD student for a person like me, it costs $60,000. You know, because you have to pay health insurance, you have to pay fringe benefits, you have to pay their salary and tuition and fee and everything. 
So this is a, um, you know, th this is the universal uh, problem. Uh, and we have to, um, you know, navigate through this and believe in, uh, but once you get into PhD, you'll get some salary so you can start paying, you know, loans back. Uh, but at master's level, very few places give you a session. In, in the present day and age. And what I have seen uh, most of the Indian students do who come to uh, Texas a is they come for a master's program, uh, they take bank loan, and uh, they finish their program in a year or year and a half, and they get a job, and uh, they do well, and they repay the uh, loan. That's what the pattern that I'm seeing. And very few people go from there to beyond. And we tell, uh, at one time, my job was uh, to, I served as a graduate dean. So my job was to recruit students to graduate program. So one of the things that I used to tell them was that, look, people say that I work for a couple of years and then come back and study. That's not going to happen. <laughs> because very rarely few people have the discipline and the commitment to come back because I tell them that look you are going to have a family and you are going to have children and they need to solve their homework and so if they come with their homework you are going to spend time on their homework you are not going to do your homework at that time you know? so uh, it's very difficult so hit, as the saying goes that we have to hit the iron when it is hot so it's better to do it you know uh, in, in one shot, uh, but there's no easy answer for this, but uh, uh, but for PhD, you'll get someone, depending on the where you're located and what university you'll get. Uh, I mean, you won't be rich, but you know, you'll be self-sufficient and maybe even you can pay off some loans. Yeah. By doing masters, you can go for a job? Oh yeah, yeah, most of the students, that's especially from uh, uh, India, that's what uh, people do, you know, they, um, in fact, uh, computer science, I don't know, they have a, uh, you know, you know, there's a college here which was not there before, PES College is, is there, right? Anybody here from PES College? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, they, they have a very good, uh, they have a very good reputation in computer science. Uh, and so, uh, computer science, our department gets about uh, 2,400 to, to 2,500 applications for master's. And they admit only 100 students. Yeah. And quite a few from PES get admitted. And they do very well. They get jobs in Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, and Delhi. But we want them to stay for PhD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there was a thinking of doing PhD. Please ask questions. Whether you do it or not, no problem. Yeah. Please you let the thoughts ask. Yeah, if any doubts are there, you can just Girish. Sorry. So my name is Girish. No, 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 no. My name is Girish. I'm studying in BMS College of Engineering. I'm pursuing computer science and engineering. So my doubt is uh, even in PhD, we're going to learn those new things. But in workplace also, we're going to face the new uh, so many challenges. So we are learning there also, here also, then what is the difference? The difference is that <laughs> the difference is that the PhD very very good question, but the difference is that through PhD you'll become an independent learner. You know, like at the end of PhD, you should know more than your advisor. My students should know more than me in that topic, and they have to teach me, and they have to challenge me, and they have to convince me. So I learn from them. So you are at the leading edge. What preparations they need to do for that? I mean, like focus on fundamentals, mm -hmm. uh, focus on fundamentals, and uh, get the uh, you know, don't, don't be in a hurry to finish courses and don't be hurry, you know, you don't, don't say that you know, you want to graduate in two years, you want to graduate in one year. No, it doesn't, uh, you know, take your time, do a good job of understanding the subject matter and it's, get solid fundamentals, and that will serve you well. And, you know, as I said, keep your minds open because just because you solve on one particular problem, that doesn't mean that you'll be solving, you'll be working in the same field for the rest of your life. Yeah. Are you satisfied with the answer? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Next question. Feel free to ask. Feel free to ask. <coughs> 
See, I'll, I'll give you an example. I don't want to. I am Prakash Bhatt. I am from the Bangalore Institute of Technology, Computer Science Engineering. Uh, first place. Uh, so, in a P uh, PhD, what kind of uh, topics do we have to do? Exactly, I don't have any idea regarding this. Is what kind of research do we have to do? Okay, so you know, if you uh, in our days we used to look at the catalog or the brochure or some, you know, now we go to website, right? Okay. So, uh, like I can speak, uh, we have a strong program in uh, robotics, we have a strong program in machine learning, and we have a strong program in uh, uh, computer architecture, and uh, we have um, uh, people working in uh, algorithms. Uh, so, depending on what excites you and what uh, appeals to you, you need to pick that. But don't pick depending on the what the stock value is high today. Okay, the reason is that it may not stay, what is hot today may not be, will be cold tomorrow, right? I mean, so don't go, go by that, right? So uh, just pursue excellence and pursue what, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, when we were studying, we had only electives and everybody said we should go to production, right? And some of us uh, decided to stay back in the thermal sciences, right? And uh, it was okay. Uh, so. Uh, keep your mind open, you know. So, uh, uh, and even this field, you may get your PhD in artificial intelligence, but you may end up working in algorithms uh, in your job, right? Uh, my PhD thesis was on condensation for air conditioners, uh, but then uh, by you, you know you were not born, I think you know I think none of you were born at that time. In 1979, there was a Three Mile Island accident in Pennsylvania. Uh, the nuclear reactor, uh, you know, through a series of mistakes, the reactor core got uncovered, the water level came down, and the hot uh, radioactive control rods were exposed. And one of my professors uh, had a project, and I was looking for a job after finishing my thesis. Uh, so he asked me to work on that nuclear engine. So I worked on it, and my first job was in nuclear engineering. And even today, uh, both my research projects are all in nuclear. I'm working on a uh, waste transport in uh, gas pool reactors, which is a generation four reactor, which is yet to come to commercial line. Uh, so keep your mind open. So, you know, I mean, that's why I said focus on the journey, not on the destination. So if you do that, this will happen. See, the most important that you all have, that others may not have, is faith. Right? As Sri Ramakrishna used to say, say that you have faith or you have knowledge. Don't say you have blind faith. Right? So you have faith. You have faith. So we will be rewarded. We will be taken care. Things will happen. So don't worry about it. Is the industries also encouraged for peer, for the students or sorry, <coughs> recruits who, who have joined? Are they also sending them to do PhDs? Yes, yeah. depending on their economic situation, they do. Like mm -hmm. one time IBM, I know personally uh, an Indian colleague of mine who was sent to get his PhD to Georgia Tech from IBM. Yeah. That's quite common. Well, it's quite common. It, it, it depends on the economic cycle. If the company is doing well, they will have all these programs. If they're not doing well, they'll cut. Because we often hear for MS programs, they will be sponsoring because they know that it is for two years or something like but that. But many companies, uh, these days for a master's, hmm. there are 
numerous online programs. Okay, 30 credit hours, 10 courses. And many of the companies, if not all companies, they pay tuition. Mm -hmm. So that is an encouragement for yeah. you to. <clears throat> yeah, because it's the, to have a qualified workforce is in their best interest. So. Any interactions you are having with the Indian uh, counterparts or colleges or during your in your in your job? <clears throat> any interactions with any of the universities in India and all that? Is there anything? I don't have any formal interaction, but um, you know, given seminars in IAC and uh, uh, Ramaya College, you know, they have visited us. So and IIT Madras, they visit us. So. And IIT Tirupati, uh, we have a, a professor in industrial engineering by name Satish Bukapatana. He is from Tirupati himself, so he has uh, established contacts. Yes. Uh, myself, 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 from BNMIT College, uh, pursuing uh, electronics and communication. So you talked about the medical link from um, engineering medicine. Yeah. Is that the uh, medicine student study engineering or uh, the engineering student study the, uh, the medicine? See, to get admitted, right, unlike here, uh, you know, you can very rarely you go into medicine after 12th grade. Right? You have to have a bachelor's degree. And to get into that, you must be have a BS in either engineering or in computer science. And then you have to satisfy in addition all the requirements for medical school, like MCAT scores and the uh, biochemistry, whatever all the biology courses that you need to have in addition to your engineering. And so you are both an engineer and a doctor and a physician. You have any program in uh, integrated PSC system? Uh huh. Like what? That would be MS and then go for PSC. Like IAC has that. Yeah. So do you have such programs? We don't have an integrated NSPHD program, but MS is not a requirement. Well, directly. Yeah, what you can do is you, uh, if you want to start your PhD after your BS, uh, you apply and you get accepted, and then you go through the same steps, qualifying exam and everything. Until you satisfy 30 credit hours of coursework, you will be called a master student. And after you cross the ticket tower, you will switch to PhD student, but you won't get a degree. Correct. So you get a direct uh, PhD. Yes. So those people who are now studying in here, yeah. they can apply for it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. How to make them in a way undo motivation. In the day and how to create that extra mindset. You know, the problem. So, I'm going to tell you that in the four hour, you can be a good person. You can be a good person. You can be a good person. इंजीनियरी दोग्राम इंडिया इंडिया लेना कहते बी मार्च लगा बीएससी मार्च लगा बीएससी आदरे एमएससी मार्च लगो बी आदरे एमबी आर एंटेक सो यार दर्शा एंटेक कर आमे ले पीएसडी टिपिकली और प्रोफेसर हेड बन्दे मूर इंदर नालक दर्शा बैठो उन्हें आई दो आगे अंदर ये नहीं थी बाता ये वो बी मार्डी दिला ये कैसे सेर दरे निम्के समला � तो ये लिए वंदे प्रॉब्लम ही नंदे बुरे बुरे के योर्डर शतंग का नानु अरुण मार्टिला अंदरे निम्न बोलते हैं स्कॉलरशिप करता है हमें टाइपन करता है 
ಬಟ್ ಆ ಸ್ಟೈಪ್ ಒಂದು ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಸ್ಯಾಲರಿಗೆ ಮ್ಯಾಚ್ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಅದೇ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಸೊ ನೀವು ಲೋನ್ ನ ನೀವು ತೀರ್ಸಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮಿಕ್ ಚೇಂಜಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ಹೇಳದಂಗೆ ಒಂದೂವರೆ ವರ್ಷ ಆದ್ಮೇಲೆ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಲೋನ್ ತೀರ್ಸಕ್ಕೆ ಶುರು ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಅಥವಾ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕು ಅಥವಾ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅದೊಂದು ಇದು ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ರೂಲ್ಸ್ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ನೀವು ಹೈಯರ್ ಸ್ಟಡೀಸ್ ಸೇರ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಅವಾಗ ನೀವು ಸಿ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಕ್ ಮಾಡೋದ್ ಮಾಡೇ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ನೋಡಿ ಎಷ್ಟು ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ವಿಪರ್ಯಾಸ ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬಿಗ್ ಬಿಗ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಲೋನ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಲೋನ್ ಎನ್ ಪಿ ಎ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಅವ್ರು ಸ್ಟ್ರಗಲ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಅವ್ರು ವಾಪಸ್ ಸಿಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಂದ ಆದ್ರೆ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಕಾಮನ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಂದ ಮಾತ್ರ ಅವ್ರು ಬಿಡೋದೇ ಇಲ್ಲ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಕಾಮನ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಸ್ ಟಿಪಿಕಲಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಲಾ ಅಬೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಸಿಟಿಸನ್ಸ್ ಇದು ಒಂದು ವಿಪರ್ಯಾಸ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಬಿಗ್ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಇದೆ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರೆಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ವಾಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಕ್ರೋಸ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಫ್ರೀ ನಾಟ್ ರೀಪೇ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಯು ನೋ ದಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ವೆರ್ ಆಸ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಎ ಹೌಸ್ ಲೋನ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಪೇ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಲ್ ಬಿ ಟೇಕನ್ ಅಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇವನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಲ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಲ್ಯಾಕ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಯು ಎಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಎ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಟ್ರೀಟೆಡ್ ಈಕ್ವಲಿ ಆಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಸ್ ಲಾ ಇಸ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ ಲಾ ಇನ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಏಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಡಸೆಂಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಮಿನೇಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾಲಿ ಏನಾಗ್ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೂಯೆನ್ಸ್ ಇದ್ದಾಗ ನಿಮಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತು ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಎಷ್ಟು ಮುಚ್ಚಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಬಟ್ ಅವ್ರು ಓನ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದು ಎನ್ ಪಿ ಎ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳಬೇಕಲ್ವಾ ನಾನ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಅಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಪ್ರತಿ ವರ್ಷ ಅದೇ ಸೈಕಲ್ ಹತ್ತು ವರ್ಷಕ್ಕೆ ಒಂದ್ಸಲ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿಲ್ ಪುಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಒನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಪೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಮನಿ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಹೆಂಗ್ ಗೊತ್ತಿರ್ಬೇಕು ನೀವು ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲಾ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ರನ್ ಆಗ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ದುಡ್ಡು ಇರ್ಬೇಕು ಅವಾಗ ಲೋನ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಕೊಟ್ಟು ವಾಪಸ್ ಬರಲ್ಲ ದುಡ್ಡು ಕಡಿಮೆ ಆದಾಗ ಅವ್ರ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಆಪರೇಟ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸೈಕಲ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲೂ ಸೈಕಲ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಅಥವಾ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಒಂದ್ಸಲ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪುಟ್ಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಒನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಕ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಕ್ರೋರ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಪುಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಬೈ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಪೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಮನಿ ಟು ದ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ದೇ ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ ಯಾಕ ಅದ್ ಅಷ್ಟೊಂದ್ ಆಯ್ತು ನಾವೇನಾದ್ರು ಲೋನ್ ಅಷ್ಟು ತಗೊಳ್ತೀವ ಇಲ್ಲ ಬಟ್ ದೊಡ್ಡ ದೊಡ್ಡವ್ರು ತಗೊಂಡವ್ರು ವಾಪಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಅವ್ರಿಗೇನು ಹೆದರಿಕೆನೆ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಕಡೆಗೆ ರಿಕವರಿ ಮೆಕ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಾಗತ್ತೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಈಗ ಲೋನ್ ತಗೊಂಡಾಗ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ತೀರ್ಸಕ್ಕೆ ಇದಾಗತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಆರು ವರ್ಷ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಈಗ ನೀವು ತಿರ್ಗ ಸೆಟ್ಲ್ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಾಗಿದೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಸಿಚುವೇಶನ್ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂತ ಇವಾಗ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ದೇ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ಸ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಪಿ ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ಮಾಡಿದವರು ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಗ್ತಾರೆ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ನಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಕಾರ್ಪೊರೇಟ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿನು ಅಷ್ಟೊಂದು ಜನ ಪಿ ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ತಗೊಳ್ತಿರ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಒಂದ್ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಇಂಪ್ರೂವ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಇವಾಗ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಏನಾಗಿದೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಈಗ ಒಂದು ಟೀಚರ್ ಆಗ್ತಾರೆ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಆಗಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅವರು ಇದ್ರ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳಿದ್ರ ಡಿಫೆನ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಏರ್ ಎನ್ ಎ ಎಲ್ ಎಚ್ ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಕಂಪನೀಸ್ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡ
ನೀವು ಮನಸ್ಸು ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಪವರ್ ಆ ವಿಲ್ ಪವರ್ ನ ಬೆಳೆಸ್ಕೊಬರ್ತೀವಿ ಸೊ ಹಂಗಾಗಿ ಈಗ ಕೊಲಾಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ನಾವು ಹೇಳಿದಂಗೆ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಕೊಲಾಬ್ರೇಟ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೆನಿ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಎಂ ಎಸ್ ರಮಯ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬಿ ಎಂ ಎಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮೈ ಟಿ ಸೊ ನೀವು ಅದನ್ನ ಓಪನ್ ಅಪ್ ಆಗಿ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಓಪನ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳಿದಂಗೆ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಅನ್ ಓಪನ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಇಂಪ್ರೂವಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಸೈಡ್ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಐ ಎ ಎಸ್ ಆಫೀಸರ್ಸ್ ಅದೇನಾಯ್ತು ಸಡನ್ ಆಗಿ ಕೆಲವು ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಹೈರಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಎ ಎಸ್ ಮಾಡಿರ್ತಾರಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಯಾರು ಎನ್ರಿಚ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಟೆನ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಇಂದ ಶಿಫ್ಟ್ ಆಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ತಪ್ಪಲ್ಲ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಇರಬೇಕು ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸಿ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟೀಸ್ ಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಅವಕಾಶ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಇವಾಗ ನೀವು ಸಡನ್ ಆಗಿ ನೀವು ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಆಗಿರ್ತೀರ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ದೇ ಅಂಟ್ ಬೇಕಂದ್ರೆ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ನ ಕಂಪನಿ ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ಕಂಪನಿ ಕೂಡ್ಬಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವರ ಕಾರ್ಪೊರೇಟ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಕಂಪನೀಸ್ ಅವ್ರೆ ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಹಂಗಾಗಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇಂಪ್ರೂವ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಆಗ್ತಾ ನಮಗೂ ಅವಾಗ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟೀಸ್ ಓಪನ್ ಅಪ್ ಆಗಬೇಕು ವಿಚ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ರೋಲ್ ಟು ಪ್ಲೇ ಇಯರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಕಾಡೆಮಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ರೋಲ್ ಟು ಪ್ಲೇ ಇಯರ್ ಸೊ ನಿಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಕೇಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದೇನಂದ್ರೆ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಟ್ ಎಂಡ್ಯೂರೆನ್ಸ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಹೇಳಿದಂಗೆ ನಾನು ಮಾಡಲೇಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋ ಒಂದು ದೃಢ ನಿರ್ಧಾರ ಕೊಡಬೇಕು ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸೀನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ನಮ್ಮ ಹಾಸ್ಟೆಲ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶಿವನಂಜು ಹಿ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಪಿ ಎಚ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇ ಡಿ ಅದೇನಂದ್ರೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಕಷ್ಟ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ನೋಡಿದಾಗ ಅವ್ರು ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಸ್ಯಾಲ್ರಿ ತಗೊಳ್ತಾರೆ ನೀವು ಇನ್ನು ಓದ್ತಾ ಇರ್ತೀರ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಜನಗಳು ಮೇಕ್ ಕಾಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ನೀವು ಹೆದರ್ಕೋಬಾರ್ದು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಪುಲಿಂಗ್ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅಂತಾರೆ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅದೊಂದು ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ನಾನು ಆಗಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಸೇರಿಸಿ ಇನ್ನೂ ಓದ್ತಾ ಇದೆಯಾ ಪಿ ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ಅವರು ಆರು ವರ್ಷ ಓದ್ಲೇಬೇಕು ಅಲ್ವಾ ಎಂ ಟೆಕ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಅದನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ನೀವು ಆ ಒಂದು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬಳಸ್ಕೋಬೇಕು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಇರೋರು ತುಂಬಾ ಜನಕ್ಕೆ ಅವಕಾಶ ಇದೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಮೋರ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಹೌ ಡು ಯು ಓವರ್ ಕಮ್ ದಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಸಾಲ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಕಿಲ್ಸ್ ಅನಲಿಟಿಕಲ್ ಎಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ಬೆಳೆಸ್ಕೊಬೇಕು ವಿತ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಹೋಪ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಟೆಲ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಯು ಎಸ್ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಇನ್ ಯು ಎಸ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಬಿ ಎಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ 128 ಕ್ರೆಡಿಟ್ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ 128 ಕ್ರೆಡಿಟ್ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಡಿವೈಡ್ ದಟ್ ಅಪ್ರಾಕ್ಸಿಮೇಟ್ಲಿ ಬೈ 3 ದಟ್ ಮೆನಿ ಕೋರ್ಸಸ್ and in that about 30 credit hours are basic math and science which is very good we need it physics chemistry mathematics uh, differential equations are there and then another 30 credit hours it is political uh, you have to take core credits like political science uh, texas history or uh, state history that you are in and all this and as a result you are going to become an engineer uh, with 68 credit hours approximately and as i pointed out you are uh, expected to function uh, stay current and function for next 40 45 years and that is a problem and so the statistics shows that in us only one in five bs engineers after five years continue to do technical work only one in five either they go to management or they go to graduate school they go to medical school they go to law school or they become entrepreneurs but they won't be doing technical work the reason is it is not easy for them to continue to stay in technical lab so what united states has done is so i met with one of the policy makers i said stop this bs uh, program which is a false advertisement to tell you the truth because the national average for bs in engineering is 4.7 years it is not a four year program as it is advertised so stop bs program and have a masters as a entry level and the answer given to me was this that if i make uh, ms as a entry level for engineers your c
and nobody has uh, succeeded. <laughs> yes, yes, My name is Kamshi. Currently, I am doing electrical and electronics engineering, final year in BMS College. Uh, I have interest on different topics. Like in electrical, I have interest in power electronics, in electronics, digital ele electronics, and I have interest on robotics. So, how do I choose next? And what topics should I go? Well, you have to make a, depending on where you get admission or what you decide to do, right? You have to pick, you know, some topic and maybe you can take, you can, if you are interested in two topics very much, you can specialize in robotics and then take courses in digital electronics or power electronics or vice versa. You know. But three of them are not related to each other. This is power electronics is separate part, digital, digital electronics is separate part, and robotics is separate part. I have to choose one. You have to choose one. <laughs> <laughs> there are some universities, I think, in the US, if you do have the option to, you know, maybe. No, no, you have a double major. You can make double major. Those you know. can take, yeah, you can make double major, but the thing is, you'll be doing twice the work. Yeah, that's fine. And then you may get a master's in a BS in one area, master's in another area, and so forth. Yeah, that, that's many people do. Thank you. I think in olden days, before our graduation and all, there were a choice for people to do both electrical engineering, mechanical engineering degrees. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Just, in in fact, they uh, just could go for one more year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now yeah. things are not. You know, you'll like. No, you, you, yeah, but uh, only double major. Only yeah. 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 double major. Lakshmi and Tande, mm. both you uh, in those days, it's electrical right. engineer and uh, mechanical. Maybe new education policy will yeah. be helpful. Yes, sir. Mr. Sir, my name is Chandrasekhar. I am pursuing a first year MS in mathematics in Kaputanga University. Uh, after we, we com I completed uh, MSc, which exams may now take uh, to a PhD for PhD? Which exams like uh, premier exams or uh, something exams may now? You mean uh, entrance. Or entrance. Yeah. Okay, in US they look for GRE. Okay, and some of the universities now have stopped looking for GRE scores. They want uh, recommendation letters and your grades and uh, overall application. So, other than GRE, I don't know what else to recommend. Sir, we, when we do PhD, we continuous like we do within completed uh, three years. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, we do like a job with PhD. How many years we take? Some, some people do that. Uh, if you can manage it, that's great. But uh, some people do, you know, uh, especially uh, people who started as uh, lecturers with an MS degree. Uh, they we used to have what is called quality improvement program when I was a student, and some of our lecturers were sent. Uh, for two, three years to get that PhD. Yeah. We can do that, but it requires a lot of discipline. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, they only send for PhD. Okay. They can do. That is only yeah, in the college, the colleges. Uh, UGC, this one, there is a guideline is they have to complete the PhD. Yeah, several of our lecturers from BMS College went to Correct. get that PhD. Yeah. No, not only colleges. Like, for example, we take uh, BHL. Yeah. BHL and IIT, Chennai, IIT, Madras. Uh -huh. uh, people who are in the hardcore engineering, uh -huh. they, have, they have to do some books. And they have been sponsored. So they get salary of BHL. Yeah. And they are pursuing their. Uh, See, that's the best of both worlds, right? Sure. I mean, that answers the... Right? Okay, they are very few. I mean, very, they are very not few. common. Okay. Especially if you get to do that within few years of your uh, uh, graduation, nothing like that. See, some of the countries, uh, like Saudi Arabia, I a student from Saudi Arabia, uh, they... <laughs> Uh, they're the same problem, right? And people don't go for their PhDs. So they promised the job ahead of time. 
So uh, the student, before he graduated, he had the job. There was one positive thing in India which has happened is, you know, the earlier when you were studying, you were only four engineering colleges. Right. All right. related to the university structures, right. Right. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now with autonomous uh, institutions, autonomous bodies, and, you know, bringing in the industry to think along with the academic people, the course is definitely much, much, much superior. And I think the students also get much better organization because the industry people uh, are them. coming and oh. teaching also. Yeah. China, China, I it will be really great in India. Yeah. It can, uh, really happen. Yeah, even there, uh, you know, um, uh, we have what is called a professor of practice. Uh, professors of practice, uh, we have people from industry with uh, considerable experience. The industry or government or uh, military. Uh, with at least a master's degree, and they teach our undergraduate students. With, uh, that title will be associate professor of practice or professor of practice. Right. They may uh, not have a PhD. PhD. Yeah, they may not have so, PhD, but they uh, yeah. do a very good job teaching our undergraduate yeah, so students. Among the colleges, MS, Ramayana, and other mm -hmm. they respect yes. that. Yeah. They call, they are not professors yeah. because of their industry experience, but yeah. they do not have a PhD. PhD. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, 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 that's, that, that's a great asset. Yes. And students greatly benefit. Like I'll tell you, we have a, uh, well, we have three astronauts teaching our students, but it so happened that all three of them have PhDs. But even if they didn't have PhD, right, they don't do like what I do in terms of research, teaching, and service, and everything, all three things. But what a great opportunity for students to learn from astronauts who have been to space and Newton space and space station, <laughs> you know, so. Uh, in fact, last 10 years here also, the one improvement they are done in the private sector, uh, they are uh, working on various domains, for example, yeah. like software service industry. They start hiring on functional domain experts. Correct. So, there, let's say, there are a lot of doctors who are joined, um, and uh, also the functional domain experts with the PhDs, mm -hmm. because they have to develop the service or a product on a particular line. They are trying to prefer a research person mm -hmm. than a, uh, you know, Purely without the research uh, PhD. So that uh, that is opening up. Yeah. Uh, same way in the law also, if you remember the, the lawyers. Yeah. They are supposed to only practice. Now, most of the jobs, they are in corporates to mm -hmm. develop contracts and other things. So, like that, see the cross kind of, you know, this will improve. But yeah. this they also yeah. gain momentum in India. <laughs> One of the important things is the private sector start hiring yeah. along with the you know, academic, because academic is there. And government R and institutions. The only problem with government R and institutions is they go through the reservations because of general mm -hmm. So, with the private sector bringing in and taking more PhD, yeah. then that will create a more yeah. atmosphere to be more PhD. Yeah. A lot of universities have become private now. I yeah. don't know, deemed universities. Yeah, yeah autonomous. Yeah. Autonomous. Yeah. So, that is also where they are doing it. And they are making using standards of very strict mm -hmm. accreditation only is given only if they have been. So within the next three years, Pravis, you know, yeah, yeah. the university. Yeah. Office. So it's all coming up. Right? Yeah. Uh, my name is Yadav Acharya. Uh, I'm studying BCA. Can I pursue a PhD? BCA and then? Bachelor of Computer Applications. Oh, yeah. 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 Job college. MS Madi. MS MS Madi, then you're an equal footing with uh, CSB in the computer science. Yes, sir. I know about the peer reviewed applications before you said that. Peer-reviewed yeah, yeah, yeah. What peer-reviewed publication is that, you know, once you come up with some material that's original, you submit it to a journal, right? There are hundreds of journals that you can look at it. And there is a reputation and they have their own rankings called impact factor and all those things. So you submit to as a reputed uh, high quality venue as possible. And they will send it to four or five reviewers, right? And then they evaluate it and they will critique 
and uh, sometimes the paper can be accepted, sometimes it can be rejected, but sometimes they point out the shortcomings and we have to answer the shortcomings and then submit it and that's called the peer review process. So that is, uh, if they accept it, yeah. you need not to take uh, exams or like uh, computer exams. No, no, you still have to take, uh, you have to go through the defense and everything. Yes. Peer review is additional. That yeah, is little supplement. The, uh, what peer review does is that, you know, you can tell your committee members that, look, it has already been accepted by the committee. Mm -hmm. So. Are there advantages? Yeah. So, uh, in India, are there any institutions for uh, uh, PhDs, for the famous for PhDs uh, in Indian institutions? If you want to pursue studies of PhD in India, where can we pursue? Oh, I mean, yes. Many places. Yeah. In many places, I'll tell you. Um, one of my mentors is Professor Kya Srinivasan. He's a, a UVC graduate. Uh, he's my senior. And he works in turbulence. And he got his PhD from Institute of Science. And he's a member of National Academy of Science and National Academy of Engineering. And he used to be the director of Trieste in Italy. You know, Abdul Salam Theoretical uh, Physics Institute. He served as the director of that. And his PhD is from uh, Institute of Science. Uh, Professor Rodda Narsima was his uh, PhD guide. So, there are many places in India which are actually. IIT is all there. What he told is IASC. Yeah. 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 What he told is IISC. Otherwise, you visit it. It's a number one as of yeah. in India. Apart from that, uh, NIT is up there, next level. Yeah. Downgrade one level, NIT is. And we are working with a person by the name, uh, you call him Devashish, I don't know what his last name is. So he works, he's in civil engineering in IAC. Devashish. Yeah, Devashish Rai. Yeah, Devashish Rai. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, he is one of the top guys in the mechanics in the world. So there are many people who are outstanding. Any more questions after the Prasad which I asked? Uh, sitting near the aquarium or the sofa, shall I have Prasad now? Then we can come back. I want to tell a few things about Anand. No, 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 don't worry. <laughs> no, no, don't. <laughs> you, you can come and uh, sit here. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no, no, it's not about me. It is about you all. Yeah. It is a, it's about the future, and you are the future. Puja Swami Gure, our Swami Gure, but to Vidyarthi Gure. So, when we did that, Doctor N K Anand Neeli, Parichay Marsa, the case, Tumba, Pushya, the case, Swami Ji, the case, Takshna, Upkondre, Amele na wo. Matarti Daga in topic choose Mardaga, Marbe Kuntan, the Kandaga. Now informal like on the Kareseri Navala Matarti Daga, Idi topic, but the India Liak Jasich and a PhD Martilanta. So Vaga, I shall stay with the topic to Namurge, Marbo Dalvantaka, Kashna Santosh for the Oropon. I am very thankful to him. Anand, NK Anand Bagani, not Lipurbekadre, or Madiro research paper serial in the Nivo, Norbekadri, if you Google Dr. NK, Yen and Brother Sako, or Porto or Lipurpe, really allow research paper submit Madiro the Lide. Our resume, I think it's about 31 pages. So he has achieved a lot. It is a, he is a very simple. <laughs> Our Parisha England Mugulu Puran and Adiyadu Bittila. Hagu, our Sahodi Yogi Galigu Puda, our other than the Wodu and Te Atwa, our other Liaga, the interest in the Adunu, or in the Pursue Madaku Puda, our health market, which is also very 
great team. So, Nanu. He is our Indian, both technical and cultural ambassador. And he is also very simple, as you have seen. And Nanu or Baget Kedro Dinandre, Tirusala Indian community temples, Archika Rilgadre, Archika Seve Kuda Maribare, Ad Martanu Ritare. Atwa Yaradru Madhwe Munji at Bob Puja Samar Mugilik in the Marstare, Satana and Puja and Tour, continuous at Marta Dare, Bere or Manelu Marstare, America Dali, our Maneli Pati, Tingalu, Huni Medina, or Puja Madi, other to photo Namgela go and star. He is a very snehejivi also. So whenever he comes to Bangalore, he doesn't miss an opportunity that all classmates have to meet. So Adundo or Olde Aguna. Amele Pratisalanu Ashrama, Amele Asta and Amaram Krishna Ashram of the Library, Library at Opustaka Bandhara, Anghage Vedanta Book House Ali, Amele Rashtotana Parishet, Alela Booksigal in the Tavan Hokta Rivinda, Amele Library, both technical as well as spiritual books are there with him. Because he once, when I was on a video call with him, he had shown that to us. And to sum it up, he is a person of you know, simple living and high thinking. So I am very grateful to Anand. Again, I want to thank once once again on all behalf of you. Thank you very much, Anand. Thank you, sir, for sharing your valuable time with us. It was really very motivate, uh, motivable. And uh, um, we shall conclude with a prayer.